Good evening, New Life Baptist Church. Can you please take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 26? Matthew chapter 26. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, this is my opportunity to preach an Easter themed sermon to you. Um, so I did want to look at Easter, touch upon Easter, and see, you know, some of the stories that we do see in the Bible and see how we can apply that. But then we also have the situation that you're in right now in Queensland. Uh, for those of you that live in the Brisbane or greater Brisbane area, obviously been affected by the lockdowns and you know we're not having church service um, uh, this uh, well tonight and you know I know your hearts I know you you want to be in church and um, you know I, you know I want to be there I want to be out there and uh, and preaching for you guys and all those kinds of things and I thought is there a way that I could combine these two thoughts into one sermon you know can I have an Easter based sermon as well consider the current situation the COVID situation there in Queensland and I think, I think we can look at this here in Matthew chapter 26. Look at verse number 31, Matthew 26 and verse number 31. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. And so these are the words of Christ. Of course, he's speaking about his arrest. He's speaking about his uh, coming crucifixion. And he says, when the shepherd, speaking of himself, will be smitten, then the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So obviously I'm thinking about tonight. I'm thinking about, well, at the moment you're all scattered abroad. You're listening in to this uh, sermon, Lord willing, uh, at home, you know, with your, with your family or, or on your own. And, you know, we're not gathered together for church. In, in a sense, you are scattered abroad. And of course, these words of Christ is what led up to his crucifixion which is what we think about when it comes to the Easter message. So I think we can look at these two things uh, together. And of course, we're not in a situation where your where you're shepherd or, you know, my position in the church is to be that under shepherd. I am a shepherd. I am the pastor of the church. It's not that I've been smitten or anything like that, but we can take the principle. We can take the thoughts here. You know, what is it that God wants to teach us when the sheep are scattered, when they're not together, when they can't come together and we have a scattered situation? What is it that we can learn from this chapter well let's backtrack a little bit let's look at matthew 26 and let's start look at verse uh, from verse number 26 matthew 26 26 it says and as they were eating jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Hey, isn't it a blessing that we were able to partake of the Lord's Supper last week, right before all of this commotion? And that wasn't the original plan. My plan was to have the Lord's Supper with the church this week, uh, because, but because of the flights, because of the, uh, how expensive the Easter flights were, we decided to have it one week early. And lo and behold, now you've got the, you know, the Queensland uh, issues, the, the Greater Brisbane lockdown. And so it's, it's a blessing that we were able to take part of the Lord's Supper together before the current state that you're in. And so you can see how this continues here in verse, let's look at verse number 30. It says, And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended, because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. All right, so what do we see here? Christ has given the Lord's Supper, the bread representing his body, the wine representing his blood, right? And so we know he's, he's thinking about his, his coming crucifixion. He's thinking about how his disciples are going to be offended, how they're going to be scattered and I love how he begins this night after the Lord's Supper. In verse number 30, it says, And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So what's the first thing that Christ thinks about? Let's sing a hymn. Let's sing together. The title for the sermon this evening is Do's and Don'ts When Scattered Abroad. Do's and Don'ts When Scattered Abroad. Okay, the first do is do sing hymns. If you're scattered abroad, I know we normally come to church and we sing together collectively as a body. Well, just because we're not together as a body tonight, 
that does not give you an excuse to not sing some hymns, to sing some praises unto the Lord. I believe I've got three do's in this list from this chapter and two don'ts. Okay, But the first point, the first do is do sing hymns. Okay, This will strengthen you. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, Speak into yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What's wonderful about singing hymns, what's wonderful about singing praises and singing the psalms and spiritual songs is that you can do that at any moment in your life. You don't have to be gathered together in church. You can be scattered abroad, you can be scattered in places, you can be in prison even, and you can be singing hymns. You can be singing unto the Lord. You can be making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hey, singing hymns is part of our praises, it's part of our worship, it's part of our sacrifice unto the Lord. You know, one thing you should definitely do when you're thinking about tonight being scattered, not being together in church is, well, doesn't matter if we're not in church, I'm going to sing some hymns tonight. And if you've been, if you started to listen to this sermon before singing some hymns, well, make sure you end this sermon with the singing of some hymns, all right? All of you guys in, your, in, in our church, you've got a hymn book, please open your hymn book and sing some, some hymns unto the Lord. Look at verse number 33 in the same chapter. We are going to get all our thoughts here from Matthew 26. Look at verse number 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. I like Peter. Peter you know, is a great character in the Bible. And if you know him well enough, you know, he's, he's always very outspoken. Right? Peter you know, generally does not think too much of what he's going to say. He's passionate. He's got a zeal. He's got a love for Christ. He has a love for the Lord. And he's very quick to speak. I know individuals like this, that they're quick to speak and they say things sometimes that may sound very righteous and very, very, you know, excellent in, in the ears of a hearer, but what they say does not really line up with how they really are. Because we know that Peter, of course, did get offended. That we know when Christ was arrested that Peter was one of those that was afraid. Okay, he was one of these scattered sheep and he was offended even though he said he will never be offended all right look at verse number 34 jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice <laughs> so peter goes i'm never going to deny you lord jesus says yeah you're going to do it three times <laughs> okay this is coming from the words of jesus christ look at verse number 35 now peter usually gets the bad rap because he's the one that speaks this first but look at verse number 35. Peter said unto him, uh, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. But then he says this, Likewise also said all the disciples. So the other ten disciples, forget Judas, because Judas has gone to betray Jesus. But the other ten disciples, after Peter said that, I will never deny Christ. You know, even if I have to die, I'm never going to deny him. The other ten disciples said the same thing. So I know Peter gets a bad rap here, but they all said the same thing. Okay, the second point that I have for you tonight is don't. So this is our first don't. Don't make foolish grandstanding statements. Okay, don't make foolish grandstanding statements. I know you're being inconvenienced. I know your heart. I know you want to be in church. You know, I, I know it's frustrating. I mean, things have been a lot more frustrating down in Sydney than it has, it has been on the Sunshine Coast. This is the first time you guys are pretty much mandated to wear masks. So I'm not sure how you're going to cope, right? And you can get fired up and you can get emotional and you may be tempted to say words that you'll later regret, okay? Don't be like Peter. Don't make foolish, grandstanding statements. You know, even if it appears righteous, even it may it seem like, yeah, this is the right thing to say. Pause. Think clearly. Think clearly before you say words. You know, consider what is happening. Consider reality before you say words because, you know, quite often people say things that sound wonderful, but then they cannot follow through with what they said. And so it's going to ruin your testimony. It's going to ruin your, your reputation amongst others. Now, I looked up what it, what it means to be grandstand or to grandstand, you know. Uh, this is a phrase that I've heard being used. 
uh, especially with a lot of people that puff out their chest and, you know, it, it, during COVID world, you know, <laughs> during this new normal, and they'll say many, many things that sound, once again, they, it sounds great, okay? But grandstanding, the definition for grandstanding is to conduct oneself or perform showily or ostentatiously in an attempt to impress onlookers. So I'm going to conduct myself, I'm going to say things, I'm going to show myself to be something to impress others. Wow, look at brother so-and-so. Look at sister so-and-so. Look how they're managing this situation. And you speak great sounding words that may sound very righteous, and then Christ has to say to you, yeah, you're going to deny me thrice. Okay, you're not going to live up to the words that you've spoken. All right, so be, be very mindful about this. And if you can keep your finger there, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's very important that you are mindful about what you say and how you conduct yourself, okay? Be, be thoughtful of what God needs from you, what God expects from you. Don't be considering what are others going to say about me if I do X, Y, and Z, or if I don't do X, Y, and Z, okay? Be mindful, don't make foolish grandstanding statements. You're turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 12. These words are very true, okay? These words are so important to sink down and meditate upon these words, okay? 1 Corinthians 10, 12. It says, Wherefore... Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Okay? So the, the Christian, the believer, I'm going to stand for the Lord no matter what. And you make some statements, some grandstanding statements, right? You, you just, you fly words out of your mouth, you know, to appear to be courageous and strong and look how spiritual I am. You say these words, right? Well, that same person has to be very careful because you are the one that is most likely to fall, okay, in this passage. Look at verse number 13. There, uh, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So instead of making grandstanding statements, instead of making foolish statements, okay, the Bible tells us we will be tempted to do what is wrong. We will be tempted okay, to uh, make mistakes or, or, or do some type of sin or something like that. Instead of making grandstanding statements, all right, what should you do? You should look at the way of escape. The Lord is not going to tempt you more than you are able to bear. Say, Lord, this is a difficult situation that I find myself. Lord, what is the way of escape? What is it that you've provided? The Lord is the one that provides the way of escape. Lord, what is it that you've provided for me to be able to get through this period of temptation? Okay? You know, you making some grandstanding, highly righteous statements, okay? Uh, what, what you're doing is basically trying to make it look like I know the answer to this situation. I have a way out. The Lord says, you know what? I'm the one that provides a way of escape. I'm the one that provides you a way to not be tempted. Otherwise, if you're not seeking God's ways and you go with your own way, your own grandstanding righteous words that you've said, you are going to fall. Okay? Don't think that you're so, such a standout Christian, that you're so righteous and you're so spiritual. Now, those people that promote themselves that way, they are the ones that fall. They're the ones that are always going to fall and fail because they're depending on their own abilities. They're depending on their own strength and not waiting on the Lord. Lord, how is it that you're going to allow me or how is it that you're going to help me get through this time of temptation, this time of trials and difficulties? Point number two is don't make foolish grandstanding statements. Please go back to Matthew 26. Go to Matthew 26 and verse number 36. Matthew 26, verse number 36. So we've seen how Jesus responds to coming difficulties, right? To, to the thought that my sheep are going to be scattered, right? We saw that he sung a hymn. 
They sung hymns together. What's the next thing that Jesus leads them to do in verse number 36? Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. We'll soon see that Jesus Christ sets a great example. He goes out and prays, and then he's going to instruct his disciples to also pray. So the third point that I have for you this evening is do pray for spiritual victory. Do pray for spiritual victory. Look at verse number 40. If you can just drop down to verse number 40 in the same chapter, Matthew 26, verse 40. It says, And he cometh unto the disciples. That's after Christ has gone to pray. He returns back to see his disciples. It says, And findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? <laughs> right, this is the same Peter that says, You know what? I'm not going to be offended by you, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you. I'm, I'm going to die for you, Lord. And Jesus says, Look, you can't even do this for an hour. You can't even stay up and, and watch with me for an hour. Look what Christ instructs them to do in verse number 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Okay? So why is it so important that we pray? That we enter not into temptation. Okay? You know, I, I don't know if, you know, for, for uh, Queensland, if, especially for those in the, in the uh, Brisbane area, I don't know if this is just going to be three days. I hope it is. You know, it sounds, I saw some news this morning. Sounds promising that they may lift it by the end of the three day and you can go about your business. All right. Uh, but I don't know. It could be expanded. It just depends on what the results are and whatever they decide on that day to do. Okay. You know, you may go through a, a harder, a harsher period of temptation uh, than you think. And so what should you do? Watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. You know, we are always going to constantly be going through uh, some difficulties in life. You know, the Christian life is not this promise that everything is going to be fun and happy and roses and butterflies. It's not always like that. The Christian life has many challenges. It is a spiritual war. Okay? And so you need to watch and pray. But notice the next words in verse number 41. It says, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's one of my favorite statements in the Bible. It just reminds me about my flesh. Okay? My flesh is weak. The spirit, the new man that is in me, that which has been revived by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's willing. It's willing to serve the Lord. That spirit is willing to uh, never deny the Lord. That, that spirit is willing to uh, just, just watch and pray for, uh, for all hours of the night. That spirit is willing. But the Bible also says that the flesh is weak. This is why we don't accomplish what we want to accomplish for the Lord. Okay, Because the flesh gets in the way. You know, it's not that some people have this impression that, well, my flesh is too strong. You know, my flesh has overpowered the will of the spirit. Okay, this, my spirit wasn't as strong as the flesh, which is why I failed. No, the reason why we fail, the reason why we sin is not because the flesh is strong. We fail in sin because the flesh is weak. We give in to temptations because the flesh is weak. And yet the spirit is willing to serve the Lord. The Spirit is willing to walk in the right paths that Christ has put us on. Remember, this is a battle that we fight every day, okay? And this is what is ultimately going to give you spiritual victory in your life. Remember, the point here was to do pray for spiritual victory. Part of that is overcoming the flesh. Part of that is making sure that we walk in the Spirit. That's a significant part of this. And remember, it's Peter here that is being addressed. And this is very important. Because later on, as we keep going through this chapter, you'll soon see that Peter allowed his flesh to uh, basically uh, overcome the Spirit because his flesh was weak. He did not watch and pray like Christ instructed him to do. And so in his weak flesh, he went about and did something extremely wrong all right and we'll have a look at what that is soon but look at verse number 42 matthew 26 verse 42 he went away again the second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me except i drink it thy will be done so what does christ do he goes and prays a second time 
You know, Christ's prayer life is very different to the prayer life of his disciples. You know, and let's keep going. Verse number 43. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So the Lord's prayed twice. These guys have not prayed once. Their eyes are too heavy. The flesh is weak, all right? And they're unable to pray, uh, you know, and, and to prepare for this coming difficulty that's on their way. Look at verse number 44. And he left them. This time Christ just leaves them, doesn't wake them up, and went away again and prayed the third time. Look at this, saying the same words. You know, normally on a Wednesday night after the service, we get together as a church and we pray uh, for the needs that, that uh, people are happy to be public and open about. And, you know, never get the idea or get the, get the thought in your head, oh, we prayed about this last week. We prayed about this two weeks ago. We've been praying about this for a month. Why is this, you know, why is so-and-so, why is brother so-and-so constantly bringing up the same prayer request? Well, you know why they do it? Because they want to be like Christ. Christ comes here, prayed the third time, saying the same words. Hey, this is not vain repetition. This is us going and petitioning the Lord and saying, Lord, can you answer our prayers? Can you give us spiritual victory? Can you give me victory over this weak flesh that I have because I want to serve you? I want to be able to accomplish what it is that you want me to do in this life. But the flesh is weak. Brethren, never get to a point where you just, you know, ah, oh, man, we're repeating the same things again in prayer. Don't be that way. It's foolish, okay? Christ sets us the example. He's gone the third time to pray. Hey, but the disciples, their eyes were heavy. You know, they could not pray. They just decided to go to sleep. Don't be like that when it comes to the topic of prayer, okay? Look at verse number 47. Let's drop down to verse number 47. The Bible reads, And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. So we've gone a little bit forward now. Um, we've Judas Iscariot come in with all these men to arrest the Lord Jesus Christ. And these people, they've laid their hands on Christ. They're, they're, they're capturing him. They're, they're arresting Christ. Okay. Now, what would cross your mind? You know, if you were Peter, if you were one of these disciples that said, you know what, Lord, I will never deny you. I will die for you, Lord. And now you're seeing the same Lord Jesus Christ being taken captive, you know, being taken and, and uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen to the Lord. You know, I, I can understand why as a Christian, you may rise up and think we need to defend Jesus Christ. We need to go and fight for him now. I've just said some foolish grandstanding statements. I better live up to the bargain. I better live up to what I said. Okay. And this is the situation when you, when you're not mindful about what you have said, it can cause you to react in a way that Christ did not want you to respond, even though you may think it's righteous, okay? And again, part of this, a significant part of this, is they did not pray, all right? Christ was praying three times. These guys went to sleep. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak, okay? Before you make any major decisions in life, you better go and pray for spiritual victory. Make sure you pray and ask God, God, you know, guide me. Give me the way of escape in this time of temptation. What is it that you want me to do, Lord? Okay, don't just take it upon yourself. Well, I said X, Y, and Z. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. We're now going to live by that. That's just pride. Okay, don't allow pride to get in the way. And Peter here is very proud. Okay, look how Peter responds in verse number 51. It says, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Now, I know this passage says one of them, but in the book of John, it actually names him as Peter. And this, is the, this is the same Peter, right? He's the one that takes a sword and cuts off the ear of one of these men that are arresting Jesus. 
Now, you might look at that situation if you were there and say, oh, look how brave and strong Peter is. Look at him defending his Christ. Look at him standing up against the wicked and, and fighting this battle. Hey, what did we cover last week? We looked at, you know, what battles we ought to fight, how we ought to fight, okay? This is a battle Peter th thought he had to fight. Literally, taking up the sword and cutting off a man's ear. You know, I mean, this was not going to end well for Peter, having done such a thing, okay? This was going to end really bad for Peter. And we see how Jesus steps in and how he uh, takes care of the situation. Verse number 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So what is Jesus doing to Peter? He's rebuking Peter. Peter, this is not the time to fight. Put your sword away. And it says, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Peter, you taking up the sword, you're going to die because of this. Okay? You're, you're, you know, the, the, uh, the consequence of your action is going to lead you to death. Okay? Now, Jesus is a great shepherd. He loves his sheep. He knew this was going to happen. He knew his disciples were going to be scattered. Okay? So Christ steps in and does a miracle and makes sure he protects Peter. Okay? But if Christ did not step in and do a miracle, Peter will end up dead ultimately because of his actions. Okay? Look at verse number 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? And we know that Christ performs a miracle and heals that man's ear. Okay? And so nothing can happen to Peter. I mean, even if they tried to arrest Peter, even if they tried to bring him uh, to, to court, right, uh, for having done such a thing, you know, the judge will say, well, show me the man's ear. Where's it cut off? And it's going to be completely healed. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if his ear is working better than it's ever worked, right, with the hand of Jesus upon it and giving him healing, okay? But we learn uh, this lesson, and it goes well with what we looked at last week, is knowing what battles to fight, knowing what battles to fight, you know, why did he fail? Why did he fail in this battle? Why was it that he was confused? Remember, he did not watch and pray. He did not prepare for this time of temptation. He, he made foolish grandstanding statements that he could not walk thereby. Okay? And so these are lessons that we need to learn in our current state, you know, um, where we are scattered abroad. I don't know what kind of difficulties may come to the Queensland region. Okay? But, you know, prepare yourself for some challenges. You know, make sure you learn from what we see here in Matthew 26. Now, if you can, please... Uh, uh, to, yeah, oh, sorry, my next point. The next point that I have here, brethren, is point number four is a don't. Okay, and this has to do with what we just looked at. But don't get distracted with light afflictions. Don't get distracted with light afflictions. Okay, right now... You've got light afflictions. You've got this lockdown. Oh, it's three days. I'm suffering. Eh, it's a light affliction. Okay? You're not being tortured. You're not being thrown in jail. Right? <laughs> you're not being beaten up and you're not being stoned to death. All right? You're, you're facing it. And look, even if you're facing that, okay, the Bible refers to all that other stuff as light affliction in comparison to the eternal rewards, in comparison to the eternal, eternal state that we will be with the Lord. Can you keep your finger there and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and look at verse number 16. And remember, these are the words of Paul. He says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You know what? Your outward man right now may be perishing to some extent. You know, frustrated about the mask wearing that you've got up there in Queensland and whatever else situation you may face. Okay? Listen, let the outward man perish. And it says here, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That's what your focus ought to be on. Don't worry about this outward man. Focus on renewing the inward man. That's the spirit. That's the new man. Every day, walk in the new man. Verse number 17, it says, For our light affliction. And look, if you, if you know Paul's story, you know he went through significant afflictions. But Paul says it's just light. Okay, again, in comparison to the eternal state. 
You know, Paul says there in verse number 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? So, point number four is don't get distracted with light afflictions. You know, the disciples here are seeing Christ being arrested. And, uh, you know, in comparison to the mission of Christ, He's taught them, He told them multiple times that He would be arrested, that He would be beaten, that He would die, and then that He would be risen again. Okay? He told His disciples multiple times, this is what's going to happen. This is important for eternal salvation. This is the whole purpose that Christ came to this earth. Okay? But unfortunately for his disciples, at this point in time of the arrest, they could not see those eternal matters. All they could see was the temporal. My, 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 uh, my shepherd, my Christ, is being arrested. And they got distracted with a carnal fight. Okay? They got distracted and forgot what the eternal goal was for Christ to suffer and take on our sins. In Romans 8 verse 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see, your mind can be focused on two things. It can be, my, it can be focused on the things of the flesh, the things that are carnal, or it can be minded on spiritual matters. All right? Then he says in verse number 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And I know the context here of Romans 8 is about sin, okay, carnally seeking sinful pleasures, but I want to apply it to Peter as he went and he cut off the ear of that servant, right? You know, in his mind, I'm going to rise up against these wicked authorities. You know, I'm going to go to the battle and, and you know, we're being inconvenienced. My Lord is being arrested. You know what? Why did he respond that way? Don't forget he was carnally minded, okay? He was not spiritually minded at that point in time. Reminder why he was not praying, okay? The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. And in Peter's weak fleshly state, he rose up and got himself into a battle that was not what Christ wanted him to do. All right? Peter got distracted. Now, if you can go back to Matthew 26 for me, please. Matthew 26, I'm up to my final point now. Matthew 26, and look at verse number 69. Matthew 26, and verse number 69. Matthew 26, verse number 69. So we're fast forwarding a little bit now. Christ has been arrested and he's been beaten. All right, as you know the story. And uh, Peter was, followed Christ as, as they took Christ uh, into Jerusalem, into the cities. Peter uh, was one that was tagging along, following along from a distance, seeing what would happen to Christ. In verse number 69, it says, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he, denied, uh, sorry, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. I mean, look at where Peter has gone. Okay, look, look, where, look how far he's gone. Where a lady says to him, you know, I, I, I saw you with Jesus. You know, you were one of his disciples. You're one of his disciples, aren't you? And Peter's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I, you know, I don't even know. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I've got nothing to do with this man. Think about where you've got to be spiritually to say such a thing about Jesus Christ. Remember, this was a man who was grandstanding. This was a man who was saying, you know, lifting himself up, you know, I'm not going to fall, Jesus. Immediately we see him fall. The same night, okay, we see him fall and, and uh, disgrace, you know, in, in a way, the words that he had originally said to Christ. And this is, you know, I don't want you to get to this point where you're too afraid to even speak about Jesus Christ, okay? Again, what is it that we should do? We saw we need to sing hymns of praises. It's going to strengthen you, 
Make sure you do it. Uh, what else should we do? You know, we should go to prayer. Watch and pray. You know, ask God to give you spiritual victory. Ask God to help you overcome that we, uh, weak flesh. Ask God to help you open up places, uh, a way of escape when you go through a time of temptation and difficulties and trials. Look for God's escape, okay? Peter had failed in all these areas and now we're at the point where he can't even speak about Jesus Christ. He doesn't want to even acknowledge that he's one of the disciples of Christ. Let's keep going, verse number 70. Sorry, verse number 71. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. This is so, it's happened a second time. Verse number 30, uh, 73. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. So the third time Peter denies Jesus Christ, denies knowing Christ. Verse number 75. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. All right, so uh, this chapter, it, it, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we can learn a lot about Peter, P Peter's uh, behavior. You know, starting off after having the Lord's Supper, he's on a spiritual high and he thinks, uh, I will never deny the Lord. And then we see him later on not praying, you know, not taking into consideration these te this temptation and, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm going to battle to the end. I'm going to die for Christ. And he did not pray. He did not prepare himself for a time of temptation. And then we end the story where he's following along uh, far away from Christ. And three times people ask him or, or you know, say about him, you know Christ, you're one of these guys. And he denies Christ three times, just like Christ had prophesied of him. The fifth do, oh sorry, the fifth point that I have uh, for you tonight is do take your opportunities to witness of Christ. Do take your opportunities to witness of Christ. Okay? Now, this is not how Peter was, was instructed or, or would have preferred to witness of Christ. You know, as Peter and his disciples were following Christ, you know, we see uh, times where Christ would send them two on two, two by two, to cities, to, to places, to preach the gospel. You know, sometimes they're together as a group and they go and visit a city. They're out there preaching the gospel. And we find a situation here where Peter is outside of his comfort zone. Okay, his, his, his friends, uh, they've all been split apart because of Christ. And he finds himself in a situation where he's got three great opportunities to preach the gospel. Three opportunities to speak of Christ and say, yes, I am one of the followers of Christ. Let me tell you why I am. Let me tell you why you should be a follower of Christ as well. Let me, let me tell you why you should also be someone that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter did not take those opportunities. Okay? He was outside of his comfort zone. He was outside of the usual business that he has when he comes to speaking of Christ. And brethren, you know, coming up this Saturday you know, for, for the Sunshine Coast, we've, we've organized the soul winning mega marathon. Now look, as far as I'm concerned, that's still going ahead, all right? This is an opportunity for you to witness of Christ. You know, this is op an opportunity for you to get out there. You don't have to go out for the whole day if you can't. Get out there in the morning, all right? Uh, you know, have lunch together with the brethren or get out there in the afternoon. If you can only do, only do one, you know, just do the one. But take the opportunity that's in, ahead of you to witness of Christ. Now, if there's some type of lockdown that occurs on the Sunshine Coast, we'll deal with that if it happens, okay? But here's the thing. What we experienced last year, remember, we had a period where we could not meet for church for a few weeks, all right? And we weren't out, you know, as a church, door-to-door -door soul winning as we normally do, all right? And so you may be outside of your comfort zone at some point. I don't know. We may see that come again. We may see something like that develop again, all right? And if you do find yourself outside of your comfort zone, you do find yourself outside of the, the norm, normal way of, of witnessing of Christ, well, look for the opportunities that you do have. You may have very well opportunities where people literally come up to you 
and ask you about Christ. You know, during the time where we were not out door to door soul winning, guess what opened up? Opportunities for me, at least as a pastor, you know, because people call me in regards to church, spiritual matters. You know, I've had people calling me and I've had the opportunity to lead a few people uh, to Christ, see them saved over the telephone. All right. But sometimes the Lord will just, you know, uh, change, you know, get you outside of your comfort zone. All right. And Peter was definitely one of those. And instead of looking at the situation and saying, well, you know what, here's an opportunity for me to witness of Christ. Instead, because he was offended, okay, because, you know, uh, things had changed and, and things had developed in a way that he was not expecting, he did not proclaim Christ. He did, he did not witness of Christ. And so the lesson that we can get here, brethren, is do take the opportunities that you have to witness of Christ. And so I hope this, you know, is a good sermon for you to think about. You know, it is Easter themed because we know that Christ here was arrested and ultimately would be crucified. And so it's a good time to think about what events took place during the death and crucifixion and the resurrection ultimately of Jesus Christ. But I want you to think about the disciples now, you know, at this point in time, where Christ is doing exactly what he came for, okay? But they weren't ready. They weren't ready to be inconvenienced. You know, are you ready to be inconvenienced? You know, what's going through your head? When you look at the mask mandate and, and uh, the lockdowns in, in, in Brisbane, what is going through your head? You know, can you see yourself maybe acting foolishly as Peter? I hope not. You know, uh, do, do you see yourself getting discouraged? Do you feel yourself, you know, being scattered abroad and not being able to come together for church tonight and, and feeling downcast about that, you know? And I, again, I know where your heart is and I appreciate you. You know, uh, there's nothing more that I like to do but to be in the house of God with other believers. But... When you are scattered abroad, it gives you an opportunity to learn some other lessons. Okay, you're scattered abroad right now. What are the do's and don'ts that I should uh, think about and consider when it comes to being scattered abroad? Okay, let me give you in summary what those five things were once again. The do's and don'ts of being scattered abroad. Number one, do sing hymns. Number two, don't make foolish grandstanding statements. Number three, do pray for spiritual victory. Number four, don't get distracted with light afflictions. And number five, do take your opportunities to witness of Christ. God bless.